the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. I believe that this is a time when the whole church as a family of faith in Calgary there is seeking the face of the Lord trusting him for direction trusting him to step into higher levels in the faith and um, this I believe by the Spirit is a timely message to help guide you through the process of prayer and fast let me read Habakkuk 3 and verse 2 it says "O Lord I have heard thy speech and I was afraid it says "O Lord revive thy walk in the midst of the years in the midst of the years make known in wrath remember mercy revival is a concept that um, I think has been seldom understood by a generation the reason is because not much of it has been seen in our lifetime but the Bible and then history has a lot to tell us about revivals men and women who walked upon the face of the earth and were used mightily by god to wrought righteousness and to promote the cause of the kingdom we also have records of nations that came under the influence of an awakening a moment of power a moment of god consciousness so write this very quickly what is a revival a revival represents an awakening a revival represents a moment in time either in the life of an individual or over a territory where there is a heightened level of God consciousness there is a heightened level of Christ consciousness there is a heightened level of righteousness there is a heightened level of the move of the spirit all of these factors represent revival a heightened level of god consciousness christ consciousness a heightened level of signs and wonders and outpouring of the spirit now a revival can happen across a territory such as the world's revival for those of us who are students of bible history and then modern history we have the Azusa Street Revival. And those of you in Canada, that's not far from you. It was in the US, so it's, it's, it's history that you know. A moment in time when the power of God moved so mightily across territories. Then we have personal revival. So we have territorial revivals where the power of God comes across a territory. And then we have personal revivals. My concern for this session is a personal revival a moment where your life comes under an unusual influence of the power the grace of god with a determination to know the lord and to serve him acceptably it says revive thy works even in the midst of the years there are keys very quickly that control revival it looks as though in every generation there seems to be a group of people who God would find and anoint in an unusual way to do mighty and great things even for the kingdom and for a very long time people have studied on revivals what what is the secret that controls the unusual dimension of God's power and God's grace upon the life of a person a church a territory and so on and so forth and I hope that as we journey through scripture would find keys that will ignite us and set us on fire i have three keys down here and then we'll pray number one 
the first key that is responsible for personal revival and awakening in the life of an individual in the life of a church is the price or the key of intimacy the price of intimacy with the holy spirit passion and surrender i have learned from scripture from my own life and from the privilege of uncommon mentorship that intimacy controls power intimacy in the spirit controls relevance many believers want to experience the power of god the glory of god but are largely unwilling to commit themselves to spend time to know the lord to spend time to build intimacy intimacy would require time an investment of time jeremiah chapter 17 we'll read from verse 9 and 10 jeremiah chapter 17 from verse 9 and and 10 the heart condition of a man is a very big deal to god in doing business with god the primary port of call is the state of a man's heart more than the religious activities that happen the state of a man's heart can veto his activity in church can veto his preaching if he's a man of god can veto all of the kingdom activities if the heart the state of a man's heart is corrupt and not upright before god then his work cannot be acceptable and his work cannot be approved here's what jeremiah 17 from verse 9 and 10 says the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked it says who can know it verse 10 i the lord search the heart i try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing that means whilst i preach whilst i lift my hands in worship whilst i engage in all of the religious activities the lord would have to vet the state of a man's heart the purity the sincerity the motif and the motivation i have learned that the motif what sponsors every spiritual activity is a big deal to god the Bible talks about the a very interesting synoptic rendition of the woman with the alabaster box. The Bible says this woman brought in an alabaster box that was of pure nerd, a year's wages. Then the Bible says she broke it at the feet of the master and used her hair. And the moment Judah saw that, the Bible says Judah queried the waist. And he said why was this wasted it would have been saved and given to the poor and then the bible was very quick to let us know that not that he cared for the poor but that he was a thief so what he said looked like a show of compassion but it was motivated by a corrupt heart a desire to have access to the treasury so he would keep stealing it's amazing how many well-meaning activities happen around the body of christ but are largely motivated by all kinds of prejudices all kinds of flesh and this is why we are immersed in so many religious activities that do not produce the kind of power and spiritual potency that should come from them the price of intimacy we must love the lord more than activities we must love the lord more than church we must love the lord more than ministry we must love the lord more than the desire to be famous the desire to be great this is the first key to be mightily used by god john 14 and verse 21 john 14 and verse 21 very interesting rendition i was in shock the first day i found this scripture many years ago and it's not left my heart and it will remain with me forever he that keepeth my commandments the bible says he hath my commandments and keepeth them he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father and i will love him and will manifest myself to him verse 23 same scripture john 14 
and verse 23 jesus answered and said unto him if a man love me he will keep my words and my father will love him and we will come to him and make our abode with him so there is a key and there is a secret that controls the manifestation of god's power and grace intimacy 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 with god intimacy that produces hunger genuine hunger intimacy that produces passion passion that is beyond religion intimacy that produces such depth of love listen to me new covenant assembly if you want god to do great things with you personally and as a church in this season and in this time i want you to love the lord and to hunger to seek after him beyond prosperity beyond increase beyond breakthrough there must be a desperation from your heart there must be a drive to spend time in worship to spend time in prayer to spend time making god the highest priority in your life the price of intimacy I made up my mind as a man of God and as a person that nothing and no one and no activity will ever be able to take the place of God in my life I love him sincerely I love him beyond church I love him beyond ministry I will fold ministry a thousand times to preserve my relationship with him and this is the secret one of the secrets i would say that by the privilege of god's mercy has been responsible for his hand upon my life and what he continues to do in and through us the price of intimacy for many of you the lord is calling you by this teaching return to the place of intimacy we started with hunger and passion but activities stole away his presence activities stole away time we can be busy for god busy doing great things for god and yet not be with god the bible says an enoch the seventh man from creation and enoch walked with god and he was not my greatest desire and my greatest testimony at the end of my life is christ tarries um should not be that we build churches or we did had crusades or we had all kinds of things as wonderful as these reports and these testimonies may look my greatest desire is that it will be said at the end of my life that this man loved the Lord with all his heart and passionately sought the Lord and helped a generation to do same is the noblest testimony that I covet intimacy intimacy you must be passionate about God and you must surrender everything everything is the key you may have heard me say it in my teachings that the price for all of God is all of you not your offering not your singing not your teaching not your church commitment alone these things are wonderful but the price for all of God is all of you your relevance your ego your money your life that is the price to see all of God so God loves everybody but he cannot use everybody the reason is because not many are willing to pay the price to be intimate with God the price to be intimate with the Holy Spirit I have made up my mind that as far as I'm alive it will become a a journey a pursuit that will never have an end to seek his face and to love him and I continue to enjoy all kinds of supernatural blessings that come from intimacy so price number one for personal revival is the price for intimacy prioritizing God prioritizing spiritual things prioritizing the things of the kingdom developing a hunger you know in our world today hunger is proof of health when people are sick the first thing they lose is appetite so the moment you no longer hunger after the things of god the word of god prayer fellowship and more importantly the desire to live by the principles of the kingdom that already is a symptom 
that your spirit man is sick because hunger is proof of health and the bible says blessed are they that hunger and thirst for they shall be filled so i pray and believe and join my faith with you that whilst you are listening to me that a hunger for god will well up within you again a hunger to return back to the place of prayer a hunger to fast acceptably a hunger to love jesus that in the busyness of the activities of our time and our day running up and down children family life career ministry business travels now covid you know several things that try to eat up our time and space we return back to the lord and say you still are my priority you still are my everything every other thing can go away but you still remain my priority in genesis chapter 28 um you may just write that for reference genesis chapter 28 the bible talks about a strange man called jacob that one time he came there and that jacob laid down to sleep he came to a place called Luz, and then he had a dream he saw a ladder ascending and descending the angels were on top moving around but the bible does not say they were coming to him they were moving around and going to those who were doing business with god and even though he was having these angelic encounters it did not profit him and he woke up and said surely the lord is in this place and i knew not he said this is the gate of heaven the house of god he missed out on that encounter because his heart was busy with so many things the next episode of his life will be in the house of laban battered frustrated humiliated defrauded for so many years and by the time we get to genesis 32 jacob now has learned his lesson the bible says he dismissed his wives he dismissed his cattle he dismissed everyone and everything and when he was alone a man came to him and the bible says a wrestle began that night and he, the man said leave me for the day breaketh and jacob said i will not let you go unless you bless me and he said what is your name he said jacob he said thou shalt no longer be called jacob for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed he touched the hollow of his tie and jacob became incapacitated his source of strength and stability outside of god was destabilized so that he would never find balance and completion outside of god's assistance and god called that a blessing that means inadequacy in the spirit is a blessing when you are complete outside of god there is trouble when god comes to you his first port of call is to seek that which makes you adequate without him that's how god blesses us in this kingdom inadequate without him amen now jacob received a blessing the moment he became inadequate and he was called israel for as a prince you have had power with god and you have prevailed and the bible says he was blessed and the sun arose and they called the place peniel for i have seen god face to face and my life is preserved praise the name of the lord so intimacy with the holy spirit intimacy with god is the first prize and the first key to personal revival number two very quickly number two very very quickly the second key that controls revival in the life of an individual in the life of a church and in a territory is access to the mysteries of the kingdom access to the mysteries of the kingdom you're never going to be able to do much for the kingdom until you have sufficient level of spiritual illumination now many believers are well-meaning many believers are sincere but there is a gross level of spiritual darkness ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 the bible says having their understanding darkened it says being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart a believer can be born again can be in christ but not a, he may not be able to manifest the fullness of that potential because of darkness 
this kingdom is a kingdom that operates by light this kingdom is a kingdom that is driven by knowledge driven by knowledge hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 it says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou shalt be no more priest to me seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy god i will also forget thy children knowledge knowledge we need knowledge psalm 25 and verse 14 psalm 25 and verse 14 very very powerful rendition the bible says the secret of the lord is with them that fear him so god has secrets not everything in the kingdom is for is is seen and known at plain sight every responsible man has different chambers in his house you have the living room you have the bedroom and not everyone would add would have access to the bedroom visitors can come and stay outside they may come into the living room but you only beckon on those who you have trusted those who you have built relationship with to be allowed into the living the inner room the inner chambers so the secret of the lord the bible says is with them that fear him is the hebrew word yirat adonai the spirit of reverence reverence for god and he will show them his covenants we rise in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries and the secrets that we know psalm 82 from verse 5 very powerful classic renditions psalm 82 and verse 5 here's what it says they know not so it now begins to address the issue of ignorance they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness all the foundations of the earth are out of course verse 6 says i have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high the tragedy is in the next verse verse 7 it says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes so it's very very important for us to know and to understand that we need access to light access to light this light this body of spiritual knowledge they are called mysteries matthew chapter 13 and verse 11 please pay attention dear family of god pay attention he answered and said unto them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to them it is not given it is given unto you to know we rise in this kingdom and we excel on the strength of the mysteries this body of spiritual knowledge that we know there is a mystery that controls lifting there is a mystery that controls speed there is a mystery that controls restoration there is a mystery that controls longevity there is a mystery that controls influence there is a mystery that controls being anointed our assignment as believers is to be like spiritual archaeologists searching for these mysteries the bible says they are life to those who find them and even health to their flesh we have many sincere and well-meaning believers who become victims of life victims of the vicissitudes of life they are unable to rise to the zenith of their spiritual potentials the reason is because there is a bankruptcy of a thorough methodical understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom in revelation chapter 3 revelation chapter 3 from verse 7 it says unto the angel of the church in philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy he that is true now listen carefully it says he that had the key of david whoever possesses that key has the ability to open and no man shut it and shut it and no man openeth so it takes a key in this case the key of david to be able to open doors and to shut doors there must be a passion and a hunger in us especially at this period of prayer and fasting to desire spiritual illumination high level spiritual illumination ephesians chapter 3 last scripture 
paul was mentoring the church in ephesus part of his apostolic ministry ephesians chapter 3 and he began to let them see the basis of his apostolic ministry from verse 3 he says how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote aforetime in few words we're reading down to verse 10 verse 4 says whereby when ye read ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ in other words i'm not these things were not just information that i learned i was brought initiated into a body of knowledge verse 5 says which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the spirit that the gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in christ by the gospel it says wherefore for this cause now i was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of god given unto me by the effectual working of his power unto me who am less than the least of all saints is this grace given that i should preach among the gentiles the unsearchable riches of christ verse 9 and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery here it is now which from the beginning of the world had been hid in god who created all things by christ jesus to the intent verse 10 to the intent that now this is what we do with these mysteries this is why we need to lay hold of them to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be made known by the church the manifold multifaceted wisdom of god so we need access to the mysteries of the kingdom if we must experience revival in our lives revival an awakening a move of god we need access to light the days of spiritual ignorance must come to an end in our lives and this will come when we pursue the truth we must buy the truth and sell it not the truth is expensive we will use the currency of meekness the currency of hunger the currency of sincerity the currency of passion to buy the truth the times that we live in will no longer give room for ignorance and shadow boxing spiritually we must step into higher and more accurate levels the bible says to walk circumspectly as wise and not as unwise this will require us knowing the exact spiritual keys that control the outcomes that we desire arbitrarily hoping that things will be better arbitrarily hoping that things will change arbitrarily hoping that one day things will be better is just a sociological system of comfort but it is not true it will take light light isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 it says arise shine for your light is come and the glory of the lord is risen upon you amplified says arise isaiah 60 and verse 1 it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you rise to a new light it takes light spiritual illumination so let's do a quick recap the first key that controls personal revival and even territorial revival is the price of hunger passion consecration that ultimately culminates into intimacy with god then number two the price to access the mysteries of the kingdom knowledge light high level spiritual illumination the bible says that there were many lights when god was doing the creation in genesis chapter one there were many lights it says but there were two great lights and that this light would rule the day for one the sun and then the other the moon would rule in the night you must possess this light to rule the day and then to rule the night the next key and that will be the last for this session is that for you to be able to command superior levels of revival in your life and then across your territory and even in the church you need 
an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing psalm 89 from verse 20 unusual dimensions of the anointing let me define the anointing what is the anointing the anointing is god's ability god's energy the capacity to produce god's dimension of results is called the anointing the anointing is a system of authorization is a system of ordination the anointing is a system of legitimization it legitimizes your operation the bible says i have found david my servant and with my holy oil i have anointed him next verse it says the with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him 22 the enemy by reason of the anointing shall not exert upon him nor the son of wickedness afflict him uh-huh next verse and i will beat down his foes before his face and plague them that hate him 24 but my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his horn be exalted this is the anointing isaiah chapter 61 the messianic prophecy it was theologically speaking um, an expression of the coming of jesus christ isaiah 61 but then by extension this also applies to the saints isaiah 61 from verse 1 the bible says the spirit of the lord god is upon me because he had anointed ordained legitimized me to preach good tidings so it takes the anointing to preach good tidings it takes the anointing to bind up broken hearts not just a, a sense of empathy and sympathy it takes the anointing to proclaim liberty to the captives there are people who need more than counseling there are people who need more than therapies they need an encounter with unusual dimensions of the anointing it takes the anointing to open the prison to them that are bound people who physically may seem to be walking but in the realm of the spirit are under all kinds of yokes of bondage it takes the anointing to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord and the day of vengeance of our god it takes the anointing to comfort all those who mourn to appoint unto them verse 3 says who mourn in zion it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes listen to me believers it takes the anointing to give men beauty for ashes and oil of joy for mourning the bible says the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness to the end that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified the anointing i believe in the power of the holy spirit my life is a product of the anointing that which god has done and continues to do through my life and the ministry is a product of the anointing what the lord has done so far in the life of your pastor and even the church is a product of the anointing we need the anointing we need superior dimensions of the anointing yesterday's oil may not be able to solve today's challenges we need ever increasing levels of the anointing and there are two keys that control the manifestation of the anointing many really but two for this session there are two main keys that control the coming the arrival and the multiplication of the anointing upon the life of an individual number one the first key is prayer and fasting from the bible and from church history prayer and fasting have been the irrefutable keys that control personal revival there will not be any substitute no matter what for prayer and fasting not just prayer prayer with fasting in luke chapter 4 luke chapter 4 we we'll read from verse 14 luke chapter 4 from verse 14 this is jesus this is jesus now when you read the preceding verses the bible lets us know that heaven after he was filled uh, with the holy spirit having been baptized of john 
in jordan the bible says the spirit drove him to the wilderness and there he fasted 40 days and night was tempted of the devil overcame the devil through the word and then the synoptic rendition of luke says and jesus returned in the power of the spirit he went to the wilderness filled with the spirit but returned in the power of the spirit and the bible says there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about believers must pray and believers must fast believers must pray and believers must fast prayer and fasting are non-negotiable non-negotiable requirements for power for grace genuine authentic anointing answers to prayer and fasting there is no man of god world over who genuinely walks in significant levels of the power of the holy spirit commanding strange order of results who is a stranger to the ministry of prayer and fasting is one of the cardinal indices of priesthood the ability to pray the ability to fast luke chapter 18 and verse 1 the bible says jesus spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17 the bible says pray without season it does not mean pray all day long it means be consistent pray without season james chapter 5 from verse 13 apostle james was mentoring us and helping us understand the dynamics of prayer and here's what he said is any of you afflicted he didn't say let him go around discussing with people who may not be able to help the 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 scriptural solution recommendation for any kind of affliction is let him pray the bible says you have not because you ask not you have not because you ask not prayer is powerful prayerlessness is pride the highest proof of pride is prayerlessness because it's a declaration that you do not need the assistance of heaven being prayerful is humility it's a sign that you are ever conscious of your inadequacy outside of the assistance of heaven prayerlessness is a real attack whatever attacks your prayer life has attacked your destiny whatever has attacked your prayer life eventually every other aspect of your life will reflect the quality of your prayer life unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come the bible says my house jesus flogging and dismissing people out of the temple for merchandising his house here's what he had to say he says my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have turned it to a den of robbers there's a powerful revelation there if your body is the temple of the holy spirit if it is not a house of prayer then robbers will come to your body robbers will come to your body they will come as sicknesses they will come as infirmity they will come as negative conditions so if your house which is god's house is either a house of prayer or a den of robbers I believe in the ministry of prayer you do not know how cheap the devil is you do not know how powerful god is until you submit yourself to the ministry of priesthood the prayer that prevails now there are many dimensions to prayer but the primary assignment of prayer is not for petitions the primary assignment of prayer is for your transformation more than an instrument to petition god your transformation as jesus prayed his raiment became white and glistering transformation through the ministry of prayer prayer and fasting is a practice that has been lost in many christian circles and all that is left there 
is religion and a similitude of the dry bones in Ezekiel 37. The first miracle that happened for the bones to become an army was a restoration of structure. A restoration of the bones. Bones coming back to his bones. Patterns coming back to their patterns. And by this I really salute Pastor Cole and the entire pastorate of the New Covenant Assembly for being sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit to set up this time of prayer, this time of fasting, now i submit to you that it takes a lot of sacrifice it takes a lot of constraint to fast for a prolonged period but then in the midst of it you command levels of power there is medicinal value in fasting medical people tell us that when you submit yourself to fasting after a period pending on the kind of fast i'm not going into that now but after three or four days a period of a, a process of cleansing begins detoxification begins in your body a breaking down of of an an exiting of dead cells and all kinds of things it is true so it it prayer and fasting profits you always spiritually you are rotting victory you are growing in the spirit your hunger Prayer and fasting is also one of the cures for walking in the flesh. When you find out that your flesh seems to be gaining ascendance over your life, the appetites of gluttony, the appetites of lust, the appetites of anger, the traits of the carnal man seem to be eating you up, submitting yourself to a process of fasting and prayer will cut away these encumbrances in your life like the eagle would rise to a high altitude the bible says and then will remain there the feather itself and stand there until a new and strengthened feather begins to come and then it will soar from that renewed dimension prayer and fasting are powerful keys no wonder the devil fights prayer satan would prefer a healthy church to a prayerful church satan would prefer a prosperous church to a prayerful church he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray now there are many people who fast but they just sleep from morning till night and they get up 10 minutes to round up the fast and just mumble some tongues that's not effective fasting there is a kind of fast there is a type of fast where you engage engage in the ministry of the word and you engage in prayer now i know that many of us have our jobs we have family issues to attend to we have all kinds of things but we must create time intentionally to meditate upon the word and to fast you can get um your 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 audios on mp3 or whatever device and even whilst you are walking on the go your spirit man is fired up you're driving there's a sermon playing this is a period of spiritual emphasis don't waste it don't just starve yourself of food and then just lose weight it shouldn't be the only thing that happens within this period it should be a process of intentionally engaging the word a time of soul searching repentance a time of pouring out your heart and your soul prayer and fasting the next key that controls the coming and the multiplication of the anointing is impartation remember what we're dealing with here the keys that control personal revival number one intimacy hunger number two access to the mysteries of the kingdom number three accessing unusual dimensions of the anointing and i said to access the anointing the first key is prayer and fasting the second key is impartation what is an impartation an impartation is a system of spiritual transfer a transfer of spiritual possibilities ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered me the bible says when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet that i heard him that spake unto me 
the spirit entered me and lifted me i didn't have the ability to stand upon my feet but the spirit entered me and set me upon my feet we do not achieve the results of the kingdom god's dimension of results in the strength of the flesh the flesh is limited we are weak in the flesh it is true that the anointing can be transferred every dimension of grace that is available in the body is transferable the grace for speed is transferable the grace for wealth and abundance is transferable the grace for encounters is transferable the grace for wisdom is transferable can i tell you this you know the kind and the level of grace that is upon you by the possibilities that your life commands moments like this would require you opening up your heart to access other dimensions of grace and then superior levels of the grace that you may currently have two people can have the healing anointing but at different levels he measured a thousand cubits it was to my feet he measured a thousand cubits again ezekiel 37 tells us 47 now and it was to my knees he measured a thousand cubits it was to my loins then he measured a thousand cubits and the bible says it was an overflowing river there are different levels of the anointing you must contend for every dimension of grace that will be required for your life and your destiny being anointed in an area does not automatically replace the deficiency of the anointing in another area i can have the grace to heal it will not prosper me no there is the grace that makes for prosperity i may have the grace for wisdom but it will not bring me healing so the bible says god is able to make all grace abound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you may abound unto every good work we are going to pray right now and then i'm going to be stretching my hands and doing an impartation from here i'm going to be praying for the sick and those who are oppressed and then speaking over the church speaking over the work and i want you to believe god for new levels you see you have to understand that god stores his anointings in men not in bottles of jar oil does not anoint until an anointed person anoints the oil oil does not anoint handkerchiefs don't anoint all of these things are simply systems of transfer he stores his grace in men so when god wants to bless you he will introduce you to the ministry of men when the devil wants to destroy you he will also introduce you to the ministry of men there is a requirement though if you want to receive impartation from men is found in two scriptures very quickly and then we'll pray matthew chapter 10 and verse 4 this is the key as far as receiving from men hebrews 11 hebrews 7 verse 7 i meant to say hebrews 7 verse 7 hebrews 7 verse 7 here's what it says and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better look at that scripture carefully and without all contradiction the less is blessed of the better the less does not mean the weaker one the less means the one who is in need of that grace there has to be a spiritual potential difference you do not receive impartation from a colleague you do not receive impartation from a friend this respectfully speaking is where the pride of our generation has stopped many people from accessing superior levels of grace this is not human worship it is a law in the spirit jesus your jesus walked under a close heaven for 30 years until he met a prophet who opened his heavens not even jesus the logos of god opened his heavens by himself even if you are a midwife yourself at the point of delivery another midwife would have to help you to deliver effectively and without all contradiction the less 
is blessed of the better the less is blessed of the better the less is blessed of the better matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 matthew chapter 10 and verse 41 very instructive scripture he that receiveth that means you can reject it he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward and he that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward please keep that scripture there very instructive scripture you can receive a prophet in the name of your husband you can receive a prophet in the name of your brother you can receive a prophet in the name of your friend you can receive a prophet in the name of a relative you have to receive a prophet as touching his office to receive a prophet's reward when elisha was about to receive from elijah elijah said if you can see me as i'm taking up he was already looking at him if you can see me and i will show you shortly what it means to see every time the bible says look on us it's not just saying use your optical eyes uh -uh. please give us acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 and verse 14 or let's look at acts chapter 4 i'm looking for the story let me turn my bible here acts chapter 4 i want to find the story of yes acts chapter 4 peter and the leper okay acts chapter 3 i beg your pardon acts chapter 3 let's start from verse 1 but the key verse is verse 5 now watch carefully now peter and john went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer being the ninth hour verse 2 a certain man lame follow carefully lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple which is called beautiful to ask arms of them that entered into the temple verse 3 the bible says who's seeing so he was not blind he was already looking at peter and john about to go into the temple he asked for arms if he did not see them he would not ask verse 4 and peter fastening his eyes upon him with john said look on us now you must understand what that means the meaning of look on us is found in verse 5 and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something from them that's what it means to see that's what it means to look to look does not mean just to use your optical eyes it means to use your spirit man in hunger and expectation to give heed expecting to receive so when i ask you to look on me you are already looking by way of your screen but now give heed expecting to receive something thank you lord jesus we are going to pray there are two prayer points that i would like to give us and then very quickly i'll begin to minister and just speak to us by the spirit and then we'll be done for this session prayer point number one search my heart oh god try my thoughts if there be any wicked way in me then lead me to the way everlasting that was the prayer of the psalmist i'd like you to lift your voice new covenant assembly cry before god and all who are following watching globally lift your voice and begin to pray search my heart oh god purify my heart let me return back to the place of genuine repentance genuine consecration the bible says who shall ascend to the hill of the lord he that had pure hands 
and a clean heart who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity nor sworn deceitfully he shall receive a blessing from the lord and righteousness from the god of his salvation then he says this is the generation of them that seek thy face O jacob are you praying psalm 66 verse 18 says if i cherished iniquity in my heart the lord would not hear me when i pray father we thank you lift your voice and pray new covenant assembly you are about to step into a new season pray let it be from the depth of your heart let it be from the depth of your heart cry your heart to the lord your maker let let it be a pouring out of your heart to the lover of your soul help me help me open me up in the name of jesus the bible says nevertheless the foundation of the lord standeth sure having this seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let every man that named the name of christ depart from iniquity he says but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver they are vessels of wood and clay some vessels are unto dishonor the bible says others are unto dishonor it says if a man will purge himself that man will become a vessel unto honor meat for the master's use go ahead and pray go ahead and pray the bible declares romans chapter 12 and verse 1 i beseech you by the mercies of god brethren that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto you god he calls it your reasonable act of worship verse 2 says do not be conformed to the thinking of this world is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with this age it says but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good acceptable and perfect will of god so you are crying father search my heart this is not condemnation it's a cry for the cleansing the cleansing of the word the cleansing of the word the Bible says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. The prayer of brokenness is one that will always attract the attention of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I believe you are praying. Thank you, Jesus. Search my heart search my heart purify my motives why am i a walker in church why do i desire fame why do i desire financial resources all of these things are provisions in the kingdom but your motif your motif guess what the lord told me many years ago he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you it is never god's desire to keep us in poverty to keep us in sickness to keep us in lack he desires to flaunt us like trophies that bring glory to his name but our heart conditions must be checked vetted pruned this is what we are doing john chapter 15 when you read from verse 3 and 4 he says he that bears fruit john chapter 15 it says he that bears fruit my father will prune so that he will bear more fruit he that bears fruit my father will prune he will purge so that he will bear more fruits then verse 3 says you are clean only through the words that i have spoken there is a cleansing that happens through the word a cleansing that happens through the word now prayer point number two i like you to pray and cry unto god and say father the grace to exalt you above everything and above everyone the grace to exalt you you become my obsession i exalt you more than church i exalt you more than religion i exalt you more than the pursuit for things i exalt you more than miracles i exalt you more than bible study i exalt you more than prayer i exalt you more than anointing more than ministry exalt him if you worship heaven is still idolatry if you worship the throne 
is still idolatry we don't worship the throne is him that sits on the throne that we worship pray from the depth of your heart the grace to enthrone him to crown him king and to crown him lord next prayer point father grant me access to light grant me access to spiritual illumination take away ignorance from my life take away ignorance from my destiny please take the prayer serious new covenant assembly make sure you pray passionately from the depth of your heart take away ignorance in the name of jesus christ the bible says arise shine for your light is come it says the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light grant me access to light to know the mysteries that are responsible for the results that my destiny desires the kinds of results that will bring glory to the name of the lord in and through my life so that galatians 1 25 becomes true in my life and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me galatians 1 and verse 24 and they glorified god in me and they glorified god in me father we thank you let that be our testimony in the name of jesus let that be our testimony in the name of jesus now number three i'd like you to pray for impartation fresh fire from heaven fresh unction fresh grace from heaven I receive in the name of Jesus lift your voice and pray pray new covenant assembly pray I release my faith with your pastor the angel over that commission and now we're praying cry for an impartation cry from the depth of your heart shake up katusia. pray in the name that is above all names father fresh unction from heaven even in this season to command greater dimensions of results financially career-wise spiritually in ministry grace grace in the name of jesus christ acts chapter 10 and verse 38 the bible says how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and he went about doing good healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him how god anointed look at the extent to which god anointed him the bible says go ahead and pray father i have tasted of your grace and your power but i contend for superior levels of the anointing you are a pastor in that church under the leadership of pastor Kola. i like you to pray pray from the depth of your heart father higher levels of the healing anointing higher levels of the anointing for signs and wonders higher levels of the anointing for prosperity higher levels of the spirit of prayer and supplication higher levels of influence higher levels of the grace for favor i'm tired of the current level in the name of jesus the bible says ye have encompassed this mountain long enough turn ye not words it's time to move and delve into greater and deeper levels of the waters Thank you Jesus thank you Jesus now let me pray for the sick all of you who are trusting God for a miracle following online and then those trusting God for a miracle members of the New Covenant Assembly I'd like you to just lay your hands as a point of contact everywhere you are trusting God for healing if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest and I want you to believe believe there is power in the name of Jesus Christ I believe in the anointing of the Holy Spirit I believe in healing in the name of Jesus Christ the Son of the Living God I stretch my hands right now and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ who is the son of the living God be healed now be healed now be healed every infirmity leave now in the name of Jesus I minister healing I bring life every dead organ dead tissue comes back to life now in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ dead organs come back to life now every tissue every system i declare that you come back to life now i minister life health vitality in the name of jesus be healed right now from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet 
blind eyes be healed deaf ears be healed bone conditions be healed in the name of jesus ulcers and all kinds of malignant growths be healed in the name of jesus every kind of discomfort i declare be healed now recurrent sicknesses be healed by the power of the holy spirit and now i minister deliverance to you by the power of the holy spirit every and any oppression of darkness any activity of witchcraft any activity of demonic forces plaguing god's people i declare be delivered now by the power of the holy spirit be delivered right now in the name of jesus complete deliverance for you every force that has tied down your destiny your life so that you would not make progress i come by the rod of a higher priesthood and i declare you are delivered right now in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god i release your destiny i decree and declare the bible says even the lawful captives shall be delivered i declare age-long captivities come under judgment right now i release you by the power that raised christ from the dead be healed be delivered be healed be delivered i command restoration everything you have lost time and things you've lost years you've lost things in the name of jesus i prophesy restoration supernatural restoration and i prophesy speed the bible says and the hand of the lord came upon elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of of ahab down to jezreel in jesus name i declare supernatural speed to your life and to your destiny all together let's pray for the new covenant assembly under the leadership of pastor Kola and his dear wife together as a family of faith i like us to pray and speak over the church a new opening in the name of jesus lord we thank you because this assembly steps into greater levels of exploits we declare numerical strength spiritual capacity exploits by the spirit jesus revealed jesus glorified sick bodies healed lives transformed destinies finding their place in the name of jesus christ are you praying for your church pray for the man of god pastor Kola and his wife pray for grace pray for utterance pray for multiplied levels of the anointing in the name of jesus that the word of the lord becomes strong upon his lips in the name of jesus christ decree and declare that these egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever are you praying are you praying make sure you pray from the depth of your heart thank you jesus now i want all of you who are following by way of this broadcast the entire family of the new covenant assembly i want you to stretch your hands towards the screen i want to pray and impart grace upon you impartation is powerful is the transference of spiritual possibilities you can carry a grace right now that you did not come to church with and begin to walk in superior dimensions of possibilities i stretch my hands and in the name of jesus standing in faith with your pastor i decree and declare over you every door that has been closed over your life and your destiny i speak to that door right now a fata be opened in jesus name i declare that door is open hither and tither in the name of jesus christ the bible declares that the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous lest they dip their hands in iniquity every programming of darkness over your life over your liberty over your joy i overturn and i cancel it right now in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare a fresh hunger for spiritual things by the power of the holy spirit i declare that you are initiated by baptism into this realm of hunger and passion for the things of god the encumbrances of the flesh that eats away your passion your fire your zeal i declare that they are cut out from your life in the name of jesus christ everything that has been a cause 
a cause for concern hitherto i release my faith with you and i declare that every request and every issue of concern let it be turned to your testimony in the name of jesus christ new covenant assembly hear the word of the lord i measure a thousand cubits for you in the spirit and i shift you to higher and more superior realms of impact in the name of jesus that when the lord would grant grace for us to meet in person it would be that great things have happened in that assembly in the name of jesus christ may you be a light to calgary may you be a light to canada in the name of jesus christ the bible says arise shine for your light is come i declare that you arise in the name of jesus your influence is multiplied by the spirit i declare that jesus is continually revealed through this assembly jesus continually revealed through the membership the pastorate in the name of jesus i forbid death from finding expression over that assembly in the name of jesus i speak life anyone appointed unto death hear the word of the lord i shut the mouth of the grave over you in the name of jesus all death where is your sting and all grave where is your victory not even covid would take the life of any of your members and i decree and declare that in the name of jesus christ the spiritual climate of canada hear the word of the lord i declare that controlling powers that reside in the heavenly places manipulating the sons of people to rebel against the counsel and the program of heaven i declare those powers come under judgment and i declare that angels are released that excel in strength in the name of jesus they see to it that the purposes of the kingdom are advanced without restraint in the name of jesus christ everyone trusting god for one miracle or the other i release my faith with you and in the name of jesus i declare that your desires become your testimonies for the bible declares in mark 11 verse 24 it says what things soever ye desire when ye pray it says believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it therefore i prophesy to you rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to a new level rise to superior levels of favor according to esther chapter 2 and verse 15 and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her i declare that from today everyone who looks upon you will favor you in the name of jesus christ exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 the bible says and i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty in the name of jesus be blessed you are blessed in your going out you are blessed in your coming in i pray for fresh fire every kind of carelessness in your work with god i come against it lukewarmness you come under judgment fresh fire grace to pray grace to fast grace to study the word a determination to be people of character solid character reflecting christ in his entirety i release that grace upon you you stand out as light even in a bedeviled world in the name of jesus christ and i decree and declare that anyone in fraternity with darkness to frustrate the grace of god upon your life i declare by the power of the holy spirit that the judgment of god comes upon them in jesus name i release you to experience the beauty of the life that christ brings to us the lord bless you the lord honor you the lord increase you and for the remaining days and weeks that are left even in your period of fast i pray for strength for you biologically your strength is renewed your health is restored and then your spiritual life steps into a new dimension it will never be that after this fast you return back to your old self i declare you are transformed by the spirit into a new and superior version of yourself the lord bless you the lord keep you in the name of jesus christ the lord bless you and the lord keep you in the name of jesus christ let the weight of your glory fall let it cover all the earth the spirit of the lord is mighty in this place let the weight of your glory fall it's bringing healing healing 
the healing anointing is strong in this place incurable diseases under the atmosphere of his shakaina salamaranda katos shalakatos taking away weaknesses taking away yokes and burdens let it cover all the earth let it cover all the earth beauty for ashes the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called the oaks of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified a few minutes and you'll be seated I'm taking away burdens. The Spirit of the Lord is speaking. Taking away burden. He's rolling away the reproach of your past. Rolling away the reproach of your past. The Spirit of the Lord is rolling away the reproach of your past. That this proverb will no longer be used in your life. The Lord is rolling away reproach. Tears, physical tears are coming out of my eyes. And the Lord is saying this is the captivity of a family being rolled away. Rolled away. I'm sensing the burden of a family. A family that has been under captivity. And the Lord is saying in this season he's rolling it away. Rolling it away. This is the cry of the spirit. Just let God do what he's doing. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. Let it be rolled away, O God. The cry of a family coming to the ears of the Savior, the Redeemer. He's rolling it away. A widespread plague of sickness. A widespread plague of failure. A widespread plague of death in his presence mighty mighty presence resting on everything that is not the Christ Yeah. 
your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty The Lord is opening my eyes and I'm seeing an activation of the gift of the Spirit. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. I'm seeing dormant spiritual investments finding expression. Graces that were once in use and for some reason just went down. It's like there is an opening in the Spirit and suddenly I'm seeing gifts being activated. The word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the deciding of spirit, revelatory gifts being activated by the spirit of the Lord. Being activated by the spirit of the Lord. You see, what this session is doing is it is killing the flesh. The flesh hates what is happening. This is one of the ways that the flesh is crucified by exposing the flesh to the light of his power. It's an uncomfortable position for the flesh. Just a few minutes and you'll be seated. This is not the making of a man. It's the Holy Ghost doing something to your spirit, man. Ashalando Sara Sobra Haske de Balash. There are some of you, the Lord is giving you new tongues, new prayer languages, new tongues, new tongues, new tongues, new tongues. It's giving you new tongues, new tongues. You will no longer pray like you have prayed before. A new language, a new frequency in the spirit. This is what is happening. I'm seeing coals of fire being put upon the tongues of people. New tongues. New tongues. That's what the Spirit of the Lord is revealing to me. New tongues. Utterances of the Spirit. Utterances you have never heard before. Utterances you have never known before. Some of you, they will start right here at Koinonia. And for others, it will be at your secret place. Some it will be at your prayer group. Just fix your eyes upon Jesus for the next one or two minutes. Yeah. The oil of favor, the oil of favor, the oil of favor, the oil of favor. I hear this in my spirit. I echo it and I hear it in my spirit. The oil of favor. The oil of favor. Lord, let it flow like a river. Everywhere within this building. Everywhere within the overflows. Online, the oil of favor that you will be drenched and you will be soaked in this oil 
leaving this service with a realm of extraordinary fruitfulness by the favor of God. Hallelujah. Just close your eyes if you can. Just focus on Jesus. One minute. Please don't be distracted. Whether Whatever is happening around you is none of your business. Just be focused. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about your life. Hear what he says to you about your relationship with him. Hear what he says to you about your family. Hear what he says to you about the solution. Hear what he says to you. Hear what he says to you about the pain. Hear what he says to you about your ministry. You can trust what you are hearing now. You can trust what you are hearing now. It can't be the devil speaking to you. Not after this atmosphere. You can trust what you are hearing now. For some of you, he's saying, I am still God. I am still God. In spite of all that has happened in your life, I am still God. I am still God. I am still God. You have come too far to doubt. I am still God. I am still God. Spirit of the living God, evermore we desire you. You have called this place Koinonia, a place of your presence. a place of victory a place of renewal a place of revival a place of restoration restoration of fire restoration of hunger restoration of grace Restoration of patterns. Restoration of covenants. We pray tonight that Jesus and him alone be glorified in this place. And Father, I pray if this is all you do tonight we are more than grateful for giving us an experience that shifts us to realms unimagined this is what separates us from noisemakers this is the factor of the spirit evermore spirit of the living god this remains your place evermore evermore Replace any man as you will and as you wish. Shift us to whatever direction we are that malleable. We pray that as men look at men, they will not see men, but they will see Jesus in the midst of the lampstands, in the midst of the candlestands. We are giving ourselves wholly to this because we know that our profiting will appear unto all. We are tapping, O oh God, into the ancient mysteries that you taught our fathers. You taught they that went ahead of us that when men stay in your presence, they can renew their strength like the eagle. 
they can mount up with wings they can run and not be tired they can walk and not be weary we exchange our weaknesses tonight with your strength we exchange our frustrations we exchange our limitations we exchange our pain we exchange our fears we exchange our doubts we exchange our confusions because worship is a place of exchange more than a place of reception let everything that is not you in us leave us let everything that is not you in us be exited out of our lives let everything that is not you in us leave and let that space be filled experientially with more of you more of your light more of your power more of your wisdom a deeper hunger for fellowship more than ministry more than preaching more than leadership more than prosperity more than fame more than money may we desire you remain the object of our pursuit remain the object of our passion remain the jurisdiction of our pursuit Merci, merci. Thank you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. And we worship you. Forever be glorified. This is Koinonia. You have called it by its name. You have engraced it by understanding. Let this place remain a tabernacle of your presence. You can do without us, but please carry us along. There are infinite replacements, but we pray by the mercies of the God of heaven. Let this place remain a center where your eyes continue to behold. Let this place remain a place of mysteries. Let this place remain a place of encounters. Let this place remain a place of miracles, signs, wonders. Let this place remain a place of bread, Bethel. Understanding the richness, the abundance of your supplies. Let this be the wealthy place. The place where you exchange our limitations for the supplies of heaven. Let this place remain the place where men meet with God. We vow that forever you will be glorified. We vow that forever we will only lift up the anthem of your name. We hide behind the cross. We hide our flesh. We hide every personal agenda. And we pray that Jesus and him alone will be seen experienced and known thank you father thank you for your atmosphere in the name of jesus christ amen please sit quietly if you can god bless you whoa just help those under the anointing very powerful time very very powerful time every once in a while God will show up in these dimensions those under the anointing just help them just keep them somewhere quietly 
Hallelujah. A few minutes with us tonight, and then we will pray. I want to encourage everyone to continue to press towards the things of God. Um, it's very easy to be distracted in this kingdom. It's very easy to lose focus, to major on the minors. Let's settle down, please, those inside, outside, and minor on the majors. But God brings us here to help us even by his spirit. I want to share with you something very briefly that I believe is very powerful and very instructive and then we'll have the opportunity to pray. If you're with me, please say amen. amen. It's a revelation that God put in my heart. It's for koinonia but then it's for the body of Christ and I believe that the Lord will help us tonight. Why prophecies fail? Please write. And let's discuss within a few minutes a very powerful understanding that God gave me. Why prophecies fail? First Timothy chapter 1, please. And verse 18. Believers continue to struggle with the tragedy of unfulfilled, please listen, please listen, unfulfilled prophecies. Praise the Lord. The Lord is speaking to someone in overflow one. It will not happen as you have seen. I don't know what I'm saying, but the Lord is just asking me to speak it just like that. It will not happen as you have seen. I believe that tonight's um, message may be why the anointing is moving in this dimension. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. It will not happen as you have seen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. So many believers continue to battle with unfulfilled prophecies. Here and there, men and women of God all over the world continue to speak the counsel of God, the word of God to individuals. But then we notice that people receive these prophecies. And most, now let me tell you sincerely, most of the prophecies we receive never come to pass. And tonight is an attempt to very quickly show us what may be wrong. And then also to reveal to us the place of the prophetic. Listen very carefully. And the place of the word of God. Because there are people, for instance, who have seen things in visions, in dreams, or have received prophetic words from anointed people, genuine people, filled with the Holy Spirit. And these prophecies may not have been consistent with the dealings of God. Some of them may have been negative prophecies. And they have remained helpless, believing that just because a man anointed by God, accredited by God, made a pronouncement and utterance to them, it meant that nothing could be done about it and then they sit down and allow those prophecies happen. So we're dealing with the prophetic today. And I pray that God will grant us understanding. So let's go very quickly. Our time is gone. Read with me verse 18. Everyone want to read. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy. Uh -huh, according to the prophecies which went before on thee. That thou war a good warfare stop there paul is speaking to his son in the gospel timothy and he's saying that some prophecies were released to go ahead of you now understand what he's saying he's encouraging him he's saying mr man be assured of this that we have released prophetic words to go ahead of you but he tells him 
that by them, those prophecies that have gone ahead of you, you will war a good warfare. Hallelujah. So it is possible that prophetic words can be sent ahead of a person. Please listen very carefully. Whether in ministry, in family life, business, career, whatever it is, that the prophetic is real. Now, let me balance this up front even before we continue our discussion. There are people here and there who probably because of their religious affiliations, their denominations, or the kind and the structure of mentorship they may have received may have been trained by well-meaning, sincere men and women of God to ignore or despise the prophetic, to despise prophecy. We find people, some persons have been very vocal about the fact that the prophetic is not useful in today's church and all versions of sarcasm has been communicated as regards the prophetic. The Bible says very clearly, and I think that I will just um, solve that once and for all. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20, let the word of God speak once and for all. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 20. If you're a Christian, please read with me. One, two, read. Despise not prophesying. One more time. This is a warning. Do not despise prophesying. Do not despise the place of the prophetic in your journey to knowing God and living a meaningful life. That means that the Bible recognizes that there is a place for the prophetic. Okay? So we establish that up front that there is a place for the prophetic. And the Bible says to not despise it. That means that if you find yourself in an environment where yourself or the leaders around you continue to despise prophesying, you don't have to fight anybody, you don't have to create trouble, but let it be a settled conviction within you that in the journey of a believer, there is a place, listen carefully, there is a place for the prophetic. There is a place for prophesying. Are we together? When it comes to the prophetic, the Bible lets us know that even scripture is prophecy. Do you agree with me? Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19, please. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. When you read in context coming down, you will know that he was speaking about scripture as a more sure word of prophecy. It says, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. Now listen very carefully. So he's telling you that there are prophesyings that have to do with the speakings of men under the influence of the holy spirit are we together he's telling you that there is another kind of prophesying that is the revelation as captured in scripture he says to also take heed as well so do not despise the prophesyings that has to do with the speakings of men and that you do not despise the prophesying that has to do with the authority of scripture the prophecy of scripture we call it are we together now yes the character of these two dimensions of prophetic operations are not the same please listen very very carefully so the bible is prophetic the words that are written in scripture are prophetic the words that are spoken by a man under the influence of the spirit of god to you real time is also prophetic but in terms of superiority please listen they are not all the same although engineered by the spirit of god the bible lets us know please look at me that the prophecy of scripture 
and the prophecy that comes from a vessel, they are all together to the edifying of the saints, but they do not hold the same weight in the spirit. You have to learn this. The word more sure means more reliable, more dependable. Are we together? It attempts to show you the excellency of the prophecy of scripture. That means that if given an option for both of them, the Bible gives you its recommendation in terms of reliability and certainty. It tells you to depend on the prophecy that comes from scripture. Are we together? There are many reasons for this and that's, that's, not, that's not where I'm going tonight. My goal is to show you why prophecies fail and then to connect a few things and we'll pray. The Bible in many expressions tells us that scripture has been tried seven times. The word seven there means complete. That the truths of scripture have been vetted again and again and has been found reliable. Listen, the Bible is not the only book that contains pieces of the wisdom of God. Listen carefully. Here and there, God has dealt with people. Here and there, different religions have tapped into the wisdom of God through the understanding of his principles. And they have captured details that are consistent with God's operation. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Chances are that you can pick a book that is non-Christian. You can pick any religious book on earth and read it and you will find communications that are consistent with the way God would have spoken and how God would have acted. And the results even in those books show you that the agency that supplied that result was not of the devil. It's not an endorsement to the books. The advantage of the Bible is that as a singular compendium, it contains the wisest perspective in all matters. Are we together now? Listen very carefully now. It contains the wisest perspective. Why? Because they are God's opinion. Among all of the books that have been arrayed for the edification of man, the Bible, as a compendium of 66 books, has been recommended by the Spirit of God that it can guide men to know God. It can guide men to become victorious. When you study theology, you will find out that there are many other books. They are generally called extra-biblical texts. There is what we call the annals of the king. There's what we call the Dead Sea Scrolls. There's what we call the books of Jasher. All of these books are extra biblical materials that were written. Are we together now? But then in the wisdom of God and through his predetermined counsel, he has found out that the truths contained in this compendium we call the Bible is sufficient to be the limit of the jurisdiction of your knowing God. You will find many books that contain certain information that may not be captured here. And God is telling you within the context of your civilization, any knowledge about me that is not in this volume is not required for life and godliness in as much as you're working with me is concerned. So the Bible becomes the coordinates if you allow me use that word the bible becomes the defining jurisdiction for your knowing god listen very carefully i'm showing you the reasons why the word of god is called a more sure word of prophecy god has vetted the truths here and found out that any believer that settles with scripture as contained in this book under the influence of the Holy Spirit, there is no dimension of God required for your knowledge that the truths here in partnership with the Holy Spirit cannot bring you into. So it's called the more sure word. It has predicted your life already. More than any man can predict. More than any man can prophesy. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? 
The vessel that speaks to you is limited by many factors. Number one, the accuracy of his or her perception. Number two, the accuracy of his or her interpretation. Number three, the atmosphere that became the influence upon which he spoke. Are we together? Number four, the level of renewal of that vessel as at the time he spoke. All of these are factors all together that can interrupt the purity and the quality of the speakings. It doesn't mean the person is fake. These are the things that water down the efficacy of the prophetic. Are we together? And then the mental development of that prophet or that speaker also matters. Chances are that if naturally speaking, I'm a person that detests excellence. If God is giving me a prophetic word that relates to excellence, my, my prior fortitude for trivializing excellence will make that prophetic word not come with the gravity with which it left heaven. Because in my person, I don't find excellence to be something that is needed. If I'm someone, for instance, who does not believe finance and prosperity is useful, are we together? If a prophetic word comes that God is going to make Sam a millionaire. Remember, I've trained myself to be embarrassed to even talk of millionaire because I've interpreted it as carnality. Chances are that I would just say you are going to be blessed. You see that now. So the efficacy of that prophetic word was corrupted by the limitation of my spiritual understanding. But then let's assume, for instance, that I was accurate enough to deliver it, to be fair enough, and you now receive it. Now, remember, I'm not fake. Remember, I'm anointed. Remember, you too, you are not fake. You see that now? Yes. The giver and the believer have to be real for it to work. So, we agree that two of us are not fake. Are we together? And now you receive that word. And then... It never comes to pass. And you go back to God and say, Lord, what happened? I got a prophetic word by a man of God. And according to the word, he said, by June, I will have a car. Remember, he called my name. It was accurate. He called the name of my wife. It was accurate. Every other detail was accurate. So it supported my believing him. Yet it did not happen. I even fell down. You can add it. And it didn't happen. He prophesied to me that as I return back, my ministry will expand. He described in detail my ministry. Called the name. Called everything. I went back and after five years were worse than even before I came for that consultation. What is the reason? Why do prophecies fail? This is a question that even men of God, apostles and prophets themselves, have not seemed to find an answer to. So usually, as men, the obvious answer is to transfer blames. So I come to you and I say, it has to be your fault. You didn't have faith. You didn't believe me. My track record is there to show. And then the other person says, well, I may have my track record, but I don't know what happened to you as at the time you are speaking to me. I know that it was not God. And then we read scriptures like God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Are we together now? When you read these scriptures, it further confuses you. Because you are now looking and saying, that means that it is within God's power to bring his word to pass. The reason why many people are confused over spiritual things is because we don't read our Bibles. We listen to people. But we don't study scripture. We do morning devotions. We listen to messages online. Profitable and wonderful. But we don't stay with scripture. For the purpose of building understanding. Building conviction. So most of our convictions are outsourced and borrowed. Our convictions are hardly intrinsic. Something that came as a result of a revelation given by God. 
most of our convictions are outsourced. We borrow the confidence of someone we respect. Just because the person said, this is it. We say, this is it too. Why do prophecies fail? Hallelujah. Are we blessed? So many people have relaxed and crossed their legs. So many people have even written the prophetic words that were spoken unto them. Barren women have received prophecies. You will have a child. And it's five years gone. No child. Sick people in the hospital receive prophetic words. Do you have a loved one in the hospital? Yes, sir. Is he sick? Yes, sir. About to die? Yes, sir. Thus saith the Lord, he shall not die. Hmm. Isaiah 38. Mighty God, we give you praise. Give us understanding and be glorified. Isaiah chapter 38. Mm. In those days, look up please, was Hezekiah sick unto death. And Isaiah the prophet, Isaiah the what? The son of Amos came unto him and said, help me read. Thus saith the Lord. Stop there. So we agreed that it was not the speakings of Isaiah. Thus saith who? The Lord. Set thy house in order. Why? For thou shalt die and not live. Don't call anybody fake again because the prophecy is negative. Who spoke negative here? Thus saith who now? Talk to me. I mean, we are Christians. Don't just begin to... The man was a vessel. I brought you Jumia package. You opened it and saw a gun and you arrested. No, you, you don't. I, I was sent. I'm a messenger. Thus saith the Lord. Set your house in order. He says, for thou shalt die. Who are you going to beg? Who will you beg to help you beg God? That God sends a prophet and he speaks. Put your house in order. You are going to die. Verse 2. Then Hezekiah turned his face to the wall and prayed unto who? <laughs> he turned and prayed unto the Lord. Verse 3. And said, remember now O oh Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in sanctify them by thy truth. Thy word is truth. And with a perfect heart, and I have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept so. Verse 4. Then, then, hold on. The first time he said, Thus saith the Lord. Now he's saying, The word of the Lord came to Isaiah, saying, Verse 5 Go and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord, the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days 15 years. Listen. What was wrong, oh God, with your understanding? Couldn't you see the end from the beginning again? You sent a prophet with your reputation on him. And within minutes, prophecies changed. This is a discussion between God and a man. A man goes to God and says, God, what did I hear that you said? You said I'm going to die. Let me do something to you that will make you change your own word. Please listen. I have added now 15 days 
to your, to your ears. Verse 6. And I will deliver thee and this city from the king of Assyria. And I will defend this city. Next verse. We are reading to verse 8. And this shall be a sign from the Lord. That what you now hear is more superior than what you had before. Because the both for and against me came from God. So why, which one should I believe? Remember, thus saith the Lord before came from God. Thus saith the Lord now also came from God. You have kept me in limbo. And God is saying, I will give you a sign. To show you which is superior. Please go back, verse 7. Verse 7. That the Lord will do this thing that he has spoken. Which one? Which one didn't he speak? Verse 8. Behold, I will bring again the shadow of the degrees, which is gone down in the sun, this and that and that, backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees. By which degrees it was gone down. He gave him a sign. So by the time the guy saw the sun going down, he said, ah, this sign was tied to the second prophecy. And based on it, I know now, and I have confidence, that something I have done has made God to override the first prophecy. There is now, let me tell you some interesting things here. Number one, God never admitted he made a mistake. So it was not a mistake. God is, ah, sorry, is it you? Uh, 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 Isaiah, you know how busy I am. I have to speak to this and that. No. God acted as if he didn't talk before. L listen to this. He would have said, okay, go back and say, it's okay, it's okay. No, you don't need to cry. I'm God. Am I still not your father? He just changed as if he's not the one. Imagine if you were that prophet. It's as if God just denied you now and left you in trouble. Imagine if Isaiah came to your church. If um, who? Hezekiah came to your church. Miracle service. And you now prophesied. And said, this is what I see. Oh. The same way it moved from positive to negative. I can also stand in the name of the Lord. And prophesy to you. That by next week. Five of you will be in America. And by next week. One person is in jail. The other person is in the hospital. And you will come back and say, Mr. Man, come and arrest this man because he is fake. Between the first prophecy and the second prophecy, man did something. Listen to me very carefully. Between the first speaking of God and what he changed, man did something. That means between a positive prophecy and a negative one that happens there is man in between that does something that can turn prophecy please listen to me and learn this all personal prophecies write it down please all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God all all personal prophecies spoken by any servant of God have conditions that must be adhered to for their actualization all prophecies there is no prophecy spoken by any man of God on earth that happens on its own. Are we together? Listen. The prophecy of scripture is a revelation of the preset principles of God that has already been attached to his speakings. Notice. Notice how the construction of scripture is. For every speaking of God, there is a condition. Are you seeing that now? The moment you satisfy that condition, there are some of them you don't even have to pray. The moment you satisfy that condition, it happens. 
Are we together now? Look at this. I don't need to speak to your ground, your farm, and say in the name of Jesus, except I'm not a man of God. Corn, you must come out this year. No. Already a word had been sent while the earth remains. Seed time and harvest. That means if I never sow, I would not know whether that word is still valid or not. So my sowing gives the word an opportunity to prove itself and then it grows. That the word of God is more sure because already for everything God says, the principle to actualize it has been added. As a man of God, I can receive prophecy for you and not be able to be aligned enough to receive the principle that makes that prophecy come to pass. I can tell you God is going to lift you, but the limitation of my prophetic reception does not allow me to tell you what you must do to make that prophecy come to pass. So I just tell you, this is what I see. You are great. The word of God says, this is what you must do. You are great too. Choose which of the two. That if you never meet a physical man who speaks to you, you can go to Jesus the prophet. I am the way, the truth, and life. Jesus the prophet. And look at a scripture. And lift that scripture as Jesus speaking to you. And say, Jesus, I hear you. I've heard you say to me that it shall come to pass if I diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to observe and do all that you command me this day that you will set me on high above all the nations of the earth and that these blessings will come upon me and overtake me. There is no witch in hell. Hear me. If you prophesy to me and say, Apostle, I see failure. You are not wrong. But I, have, I know that there is a more sure word of prophecy. For as long as I walk in keeping with what Jesus the prophet said, there is no divination and there is no enchantment from the pit of hell that can override the authority. In the cadre of authority, the prophecy of scripture stands superior to any human prophecy. Men of God and women of God are gradually pushing prophecy outside of the jurisdiction of its relevance. And members are today becoming slaves to men and women of God. A man seems to be able to own the souls of people because you can just speak to anybody anyhow. And they go back saying, this one has spoken. Apostle Joshua Selman has spoken. No. Prophecies can fail to the negative or to the positive. I can speak to you and say God will bless you. You will eat well. Don't obey the principles of scripture that make for increase and you will be surprised. When men say there is a casting down, you will join them and say there is a casting down. Why? Because you violated the principle. There is no truth of scripture salvation is the freest thing we know and the condition is that if thou shall believe with thy heart talk to me koinonia and thou shall confess with your mouth that means you can stand around a preacher and he can preach a powerful sermon and you will still go to hell you had the word but you still went to hell this action part this condition part is why many prophecies fail. The prophet spoke in scripture that a virgin shall be with child. He didn't say a virgin called Mary. He said a virgin. There were many women who qualified for that prophecy. But one woman aligned herself enough. So the angel came to say, Madam, we have found you favored. And I've taught you that favor does not happen automatically. Mary was understudied from heaven. There were many other ladies. But heaven looked at Mary. Does she sustain? Please help them. Does she sustain the character? Will Mary be able to stand the embarrassment of getting pregnant from a ghost? 
The way Mary is, if pressure is too much, are you sure she's not going to corner Joseph and run away? Is this woman, is she liable to receiving a bribe from a rabbi? Mary was not just favored, she was studied. Her alignment was making her partner with prophecy. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then the angel came back and said, Mary, we have found you favored. And the favor is that based on our examination, you are the most fit person among the virgins here to carry Jesus. She said, well, um, I don't want to abort prophecy. How shall these things be? Seeing that I know not a man. And then the angel explained that, okay, this is what will happen. You will not need to meet a man. The Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. Your stomach will just start bulging out. Don't find it strange. Don't do anything. Don't shout. Don't worry. It's okay. And she said, be it unto me. Be the word unto me. I received the word. Be it unto me according to your word. Mary would have sat down and said, no, this deal is not fair. The ghost has to come with you and explain to me. And let me understand if I see him and I think he's really a spirit and that. Do you know it would have delayed the birth of Jesus? Heaven would have had to now go back and start looking for another person again. Are you getting what I'm saying now? This is very powerful. So God has spoken great things over our lives. Many of us received the word. We didn't receive the conditions. We left the conditions on the ground. When we fell down, we got up, we received the word. But we left the conditions. As a result, our lives are a shadow of what God said should be. Because we received the word, but did not receive the conditions. The angel comes and tells Joshua that this city will be defeated. But then he gives him the conditions immediately and demands that the conditions be adhered to in total. So he began to go around Jericho once every day. The seventh day he went seven times and they shouted and prophecy came to pass. There is no prophecy that happens on its own. There are few prophecies in the Bible that are called written judgments. There are verdicts already that have been declared. One of it is the eternal doom of Lucifer. There is no prayer retreat that will happen to beg God to change his mind about the condition of Satan. So if you have a dream and you see Satan coming back in heaven to join the seraphs you know straight up that you are under attack because based on the truth of scripture written it's a written judgment are we together another written judgment the eternal doom of those who reject christ the antichrist and his cohorts these things are written the only thing you can do is to exempt yourself from it but you cannot stop it Number three, the reality of curses and yokes on earth is written. Ordinances were intentionally put. The only thing you can, you can't stop curses on the earth. No, they are there. The only thing you can do is exempt yourself from it. You can say minus me and my family, but to say minus it out of the earth, no sir, it is not given to you. You can cast out demons from your life, from a church, from your vicinity, but not from the earth. There is nobody who will stand and gather all the demons on earth because he said, I behold, I give you power. Remember scripture, power. So I have that authority. I've been risen with Christ above all thrones, dominions, and every name that is named. You gather all the demons in one place, catch them, and let there be peace on earth. No, that does not happen. I, I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. The number one reason why prophecies do not come to pass is because people receive the word but do not receive the condition. The condition for actualizing the prophecies. 
The other side of this is that you can change any prophecy. Write it down, please. Don't let anybody tell you there are prophetic words that will not change and cannot change. That is against the character of scripture. The Bible shows us again and again that it is within the power of a believer to change prophecies. That means if your father looks at you and says you are cursed, you are a foolish and stupid son. I know a woman, years ago when I was in secondary school, there was a woman who was tired of her son stealing. She will make her little money and this naughty boy will come and carry, continue to fish the money out of the, the mother's wallet. And one day she was angry and she looked at him and cursed him. She said he will stop stealing only when rats stop stealing. Let me tell you, this guy, as soon as he's going out of the cell, he won't reach two weeks, he's back again. They know him, they just open the door, there's nothing to ask. What happened? Mm -mm. Just walk in, we know. Do you think that boy does not have a way out? Imagine that that boy is in a place where he never meets a man who can speak to him. Is there hope for that boy? Yes, sir. There is Jesus the prophet. That he can look at it. That even the lawful captives. Is it in your Bible? A more sure word of prophecy. Even the lawful captives can be delivered. So you can find this truth and believe it. But you just get up and say, wow, I found it. Even the lawful captives shall be delivered. I'm delivered. Hallelujah. You are not delivered. Mm -mm -mm -mm. You are only informed about deliverance that is possible. Are you seeing how we mock ourselves? We just find it out. Oh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm done. And right after then, you will see what they say should happen. Happen. There are conditions. What made the captive lawfully captive? And what is the condition for that person to be delivered? The biggest hit of this prophetic inaccuracy is in the area of financial prosperity. Many poor people in the church today, the years they have spent waiting for prophecy is the same time they would have activated the blessings of God upon their lives. They have sat down lazily and carelessly and some foolishly waiting for a prophetic word by an accurate man. And members continue to harass men of God around and say, you have spoken, it's not working. I bless you. I bless you. You are correct. But you go and read and study everything the Bible says about the blessing. How it works and how it is activated. And you'll find out that many people are hoping in futility. It's true. Charismatics. This is where charismatics have failed. The excitement that comes with revelation has swallowed up the need for compliance. People just jump here and there. Things will happen. He shall keep thee in perfect peace. Yes. And no evil shall come nigh thy dwelling. You go and look for trouble and see what happens. It will look as if angels are no longer there. So what have you, I, I get what I'm saying now. Yes. You can choose to end your life now, today, right now. You go and stand, you go and stand on the road. Let me be prophesying. In Jesus' name, you will live long. I stand under the oil God has given me. While you stroll foolishly, you use your will that is more powerful. That's the same will that brought Jesus into your heart. Jesus stood at the gate of your heart and would not enter until that will let him in. And you stand in front of a door and a truck. The spirit of death is an opportunist. He looks for a scenario that makes his ministry possible. So he's scouting around Zaria and here he finds someone about to stand near a T-junction. Carelessly. He will heighten the drunkenness of the driver and with speed he will not see you. He will come and clear you. You are dead. Now resurrection is a different law altogether. We can now start but as far as that scene is concerned you are dead. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something that happened to a young man. I'm sure he may be listening or maybe he's here. It's a big mistake that the boy made. He had some carryovers. 
And um, he saw me in a dream, <coughs> according to him. I appeared in a dream and I told him, I said, everything is all right. Now, watch this now. Everything is all right. Very consistent with what God will say. Are we together? The same way God looks at the poor and says, let the poor say, I am rich. They said, I am rich till they became old. Nothing happened. And then the gentleman got up and didn't even do anything. He refused to take the carryovers, refused to do anything, and he just sat down and he called me and was sending text messages and was telling me, look, I'm not trying to jeer the gentleman, no, not at all. I'm just trying to use it to correct. Now, you see, that word was at the mercy of a condition. Are we together now? Is it not when your lecturer sees your script? Now, you have done your own part to at least write. The Spirit of God can now move upon that man to show you mercy. Mercy is not possible now because the condition to activate the mercy was not granted. The same way the Bible says that you will build houses and you keep looking at your land, that house will not be built. Someone will look at you and say, speak to me. Say, I, I, the same thing I told you last year is what God is showing me again. The day you take a step of faith and you buy sharp sand, one tipper, and pour there by faith, what happens? That's your five loaf and two fish. You are ready for a miracle. A destiny helper can now come and say, what's going on here? Say, I'm, I'm starting life. Or I'm pushing this thing by faith. Say, really, come to my office tomorrow. Now, your obedience has allowed prophecy to find expression. Are we together? Yes. Your marriage shall be a blessing. Your children surround your table. You will see your children's children. You are a bad gentleman and you are a bad lady. God will never, that prophecy will never come to pass. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? There are many guys that just cross their legs. I saw myself. I saw my children. I saw a jeep here. I saw a resort center here. You are dreaming. Let me tell you this. Prophecy will never come to pass because God demands diligence and productivity for wealth to happen. You have ignored that law. And so that prophecy will never come to pass. Are we together? Your marriage will be a blessing if you know what it takes for a husband and a wife to live together. If the only thing you take to your marriage is prophecy, you are in trouble. You must take understanding. You must take what? Understanding. So that when your wife shouts and says, I hate you, I hate you, I hate the day I married you, you just know that she doesn't mean what she's saying. If you carry that, that straight line, prophetic thinking and slap her, that's the end of that marriage. In spite of the fact that the Bible says you will see your children's children. Prophecies can fail. When men do not satisfy the conditions that make for the actualization of that prophecy, it will fail. The same way negative prophecies can be averted. I've told you, I've shared this with you once and again that people continue, you know, here and there, people can have dreams about me over trips that I'm taking, whether by road or by air, and they can send a text and say, Apostle, I got up, I saw a very dangerous dream. Very dangerous dream. And this is it. And I saw a ghastly motor accident or I saw a plane crash and you are there. Now, they are not fake, truly. It may be that that's the plot of the enemy. It would be stupid for me to think Satan is going on break for me. No. There are many people who think the devil is attacking them. The devil is not attacking them. Do you know what it takes for Satan to attack you? You to be honest, if you were Satan, will you attack everybody? It's not strategic. What have you done that justifies being attacked? The level of investment you think Satan is making on you is, is, is flattery. Most of what we are getting is the inertia of prophecy. Just sitting on your life and not moving. Because you have refused to do something about it. Take Satan out of the earth. People's condition will only improve a little. Only do what? 
improve a little you will be surprised you think if satan is taken out of the earth suddenly the poor will be rich suddenly you in fact let me tell you there are many people who that god uses the way the devil pushes them to help them understand god you will be surprised to see that some people's situation will be worse when satan is out because there's no basis for pain again to bring conviction Some of you right now are sitting down waiting for prophecies to happen by themselves. Some of our parents received prophecies since 1980, 1970 till today. That prophecy has not come to pass. And we continue to carry disappointment in our hearts. I am showing you right now, listen very carefully, that more than the speakings of any man, you must find a place there are many men of God who people will look and say, I see a grace on you. Say, yes, sir, I, somebody has told me before, confirmation. I see that you will be a powerful man of God. Yes, sir. I'm seeing like Reinhard Bonke. I see Reinhard Bonke. The other one said that you will never be like Reinhard. Do you know what Reinhard Bonke did to be Reinhard Bonke? Talk about the times of prayer. Talk about the times of fasting. Listen to me. Talk about the times of engaging the world. Talk about the disciplines that it takes to host God's power. You ignore that there is no Reinhard Bonke for you. The worst, in fact, let me even take it a step further before we pray. The worst one is that hands were laid on you when prophecies came. And you just believe that because hands were laid and I fell down. I got up with conditions satisfied automatically. No, you were engraced by that falling. The real anointing for the result has not yet been given. That anointing for the result is waiting when your obedience is complete. That's when it comes on you. The anointing you received, I'm telling you, is the grace to walk in keeping with the conditions that bring that prophecy. Are we together? It's a simple message, but it will work wonders in your life. You will call your brother very quickly and say, sir, please come. I already know that this your journey is heading nowhere. Just sit down. Let us discuss. Why is this family like this? He said, don't worry. Prophecy just came last week. And you will know who to drive away from your house respectfully. By the time he comes again, singing all kinds of songs and saying, it does not work, Abi, let's walk again. Bring 200,000. Bring one chicken bring one bag of rice and then success will imaginarily happen no sir whether a man is fake or real the result in your life will be the same if you don't engage it did you hear what i said whether a prophet is fake or a prophet is real once there is no engaging the conditions that make for actualizing that prophecy your result i guarantee you will be the same it's why many people don't go to church. They went to a herbalist and the herbalist prophesied to them. And then they got born again and went to a real man of God. He prophesied to them. The result was the same, zero. And they said, I don't, there's no difference. There will not be difference because the defining factor is not God, not the prophets, but you, the recipient of that prophecy. If God tells you you are going to marry a multimillionaire, what are you supposed to do? Thanksgiving. Yes, Thanksgiving. But what, what do you do else where you finish Thanksgiving? You go back and start saying, God, help me. A millionaire means many people will hate him. A millionaire means that he may not have time to rest. A wise person begins to war with prophecy. You, God tells you now you will be a millionaire. How do you behave? Buy new clothes. No, sir. That's not how to conform to prophecy. You go back and follow them who through faith and patience. Once you don't see faith and patience, don't follow them. Even if you see the promise, you must see faith and patience to qualify followership. Anybody you see the promise and you don't see faith, meaning there must be a God equation in their life. There must be something in their equation that forced them to need God. Are we blessed? There are many things today that God has brought this ministry into 
that God did not directly prophesy to me. I'm not one of those men of God that will lie to you that everything we're seeing is what God... Mm -hmm. There are things God did not tell me. I went to the word, Jesus the prophet. I looked at the truths of scripture. I understood the truths of scripture. And I saw the conditions attached to it. Because the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. I read and studied how Jesus increased in ministry. Jesus increased in ministry because he first increased in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and with men. That means for anything to increase around you, something must increase within you. That's a revelation. So I don't move around with the brain of 50 members and the prayer request of 5,000 members. It doesn't work that way. I must upgrade myself spiritually, intellectually, to be able to host the kind of increase that I trust God to bring. We only know that a crowd came to Jesus, but Jesus grew. At age 12, when his mates were running around, Jesus was at the temple learning, learning. Are we together? There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus around feasts. There were a few times in scripture where we saw Jesus just enjoying himself. That's the portrait of a serious man of God. You, God has called you into ministry. Every movie that comes out, you must see it and watch it. It's all right if you are called into the movie ministry. But if you are called into the word ministry with power and signs and wonders, that's too much luxury. To host the anointing. Are we together? Listen, let me tell you this. Sincerely, I, I tell you the truth as a man of God. I stand from the standpoint of the knowledge that God has given me. And I look at many people and respectfully I can tell you. There are people that results are far from them. I hate to be a bearer of bad news. But even when people stand for me to pray for them, I know that what I'm, I'm doing is not the final solution to that problem. And it is painful as a man of God. Not many people will tell you this truth. Because sometimes you see men of God who are victims of manipulating the ignorance of people. The ignorance of people can be used to the advantage of the man of God. There are times that people stand with seeds here sincerely. And I look at them and they say, Apostle, I just emptied my account and my heart is bleeding. What is this for now? He say, Apostle, I know things can turn around in my family. I know the answer is yes and no. Yes, a breakthrough can come. But sustainable financial open doors, no, sir. There are truths you must learn. So I tell the person, okay, go and get koinonia teachings there. And sometimes as I'm talking to them, they start shaking. The moment they fall, they stand up and just laugh. You see some of them calling their loved ones, it's done. No, it's not exactly done. Honestly. You see, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You must, you must, you must love God and love people to be dishonest. There are very successful people in this ministry, in business, career and so on and so forth every one of them can tell you the different units the different dimensions that construct themselves together to spell success were adhered to where the prophetic was needed they opened themselves to that dimension where prayer was needed they opened themselves where diligence was needed they opened themselves like the ingredients of a, of a meal everything was combined together to equal success this is what I'm teaching you. Handing over the responsibility of your destiny to the prophetic alone as the ultimate determinant of your success and not staying with the word of God to understand the conditions will end you in futility and in pain. There were many things that I did not see in my life in spite of the prophetic words I kept receiving. I had to study prophecy and say, look, I have to look at this thing and examine it very carefully. And I began to find out if thou shalt diligently, Deuteronomy 28, please give it to us. Deuteronomy 28, if thou shalt diligently hearken, look up please. 
this is prophecy the correct approach to prophecy and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to what observe and to faith is not just hearing what god has said faith is doing what god says should be done to see that result when the rich man came to jesus he said good master what must i do to be saved apostle the devourer is coming every time i can't hold 10 naira like this it's as if there's a bag now let me tell you this i can stand as a man of god please watch this we're going to pray shortly i can stand as a man of god and god can show me a revelation i can look at for instance come sam it's looking sharp and smart now watch this you see how sharp and smart sam is looking imagine that god opens my eyes now the way prophetic things are interpreted you have to be spiritual and be grounded in the word to interpret them properly because god will open my eyes now do you know what i will see i will see this i will see sam holding a basket and i will see water being poured in that basket and going down that can be a template that god is showing me to mean that there is loss and wastage in his life are we together now so he uses because god speaks in pictures the bible calls it similitudes it is not only words god speaks in pictures so when i see that now watch this i can say ah sam all that i see your finance is going down you say yes it's true everything going down you say yes you don't cover that basket just with a prophetic word no remember the going down of the finances is a product of many decisions that he is taking so the real captivity is the financial decisions his understanding about god's methodologies as far as increase is concerned that affects and influences the decisions he's taking that now authorizes this opportunist called the devourer to destroy him so to really help sam after prophesying to him i'll say sam i need to show you the conditions provided for by scripture to stabilize your finance number one let's look at the spiritual laws you are breaking number two let's look at the understanding let's look at what you are doing you are not producing anything you are not you are not diligent you are not exchanging anything for value number two your reputation is making you to make bad decisions that are above and beyond your financial level now you are closing that door permanently remember that knowledge and wisdom are stabilizers of destiny when sam goes back now number one he will pray and rebuke that spirit but number two he has now received a dimension of intelligence that teaches him that patience is godly are we together that teaches him that it is all right to move small in life if all you have is a shoe of 300 naira it is not a mockery on your reputation an understanding you had before called it shame what you have now received calls it process because of that now when the devourer comes as usual a fortification has been built through knowledge now the prophecy of sam god is changing your life can now happen because favor can now come a system of preservation has come this is how sam is warring with this prophecy otherwise sam can kneel down and say yes sir i will speak to him the destiny helper will come and pour the same water into the same basket so here's what happens in church and i say this to churches and ministries like ours here that are apostolic and prophetic because many times we have little value for the exegesis of the word bringing understanding to the saints bringing illumination because of the charismatism around the demonstration of the spirit and the prophetic many times we we feel embarrassed even as ma as men of god to settle down and mature believers through the teaching of the word we would prefer to just begin to move imagine that I, I i come here now and the power of god begins to break out i mean it's easy for you to see that this is that joshua selman you know the bible said this is that so when you bring a visitor you say i told you it will reach 10 minutes when he comes up you'll be flying I, you doubted me now you see it happening but sometimes when you sit down you see the way believers are embarrassed 
and ashamed. When the word of God is taught you, you see that itch. I need something. When someone shouts, they start laughing. You know, it just it's like it just eases up because many people do not want to grow. We have taught that prophecy is a shortcut to destiny. No, prophecy is part of the requirements. Listen very carefully. It's part of the systems that were put by the wisdom of God for the building of the saints. Prophecy was not designed to replace obedience to God's set order. If I give you a book and I say study this book on church growth, and success and leadership and administration chances are you are going to throw that book away if i say come to me and i will receive just one touch how many touches one one touch you go back your cathedral will enter another dimension that prophecy will work if you have prepared your way like dotam before you go dotam prepared his way before the lord if you have prepared your way you have done your assignment Oh, with, with Jesus' joy, that oil will come and set your life in order. Before the fire came, there was already a sacrifice prepared already. The fire would not come. The fire cannot come and be hanging in the air and say, oh, you have quickly prepared the sacrifice. You prepare the sacrifice first. There are some of you, the prophecy on your life requires a requisite level of transformation for it to come and since your rate of change is slow it will take a long time so when you say god help me god says i'm i'm ready to do it today if you will change to that dimension what do you understand about pastoring thousands of people what do you understand about the diplomacy of conflict management? What do you understand about leadership and administration? What do you understand about finance? What do you understand about impact and influence? What do you understand about preparing sermons? What do you understand about, about giving people an expression, growth? Just anoint me, oh God, don't worry about anything. Let me tell you what you will. You will produce a place with so many miracles that will depend on you. They will never be able to rise. This is the tragedy of the prophetic and the apostolic ministry. If I speak to you, Sam, and by tomorrow, someone gives Sam a house, a car, do you think next week Sam will come for Koinonia with speed? Sam will not even sit down there. He will sit down on the altar. Are you seeing that now? And then, the day, let's assume that this is a branch church. The day they now want to transfer me to go to the U.S., what do you think God will be telling Sam at that point? Sam will almost die that he had God. No. The emotional connect that comes by reason of the breakthrough he received through my life has made my voice look like the voice of God to him. And most often than not, God did not speak and tell him to go anywhere. He just examined the other replacement they brought. And the lazy nature of the man greeted the congregation. I said, no, I won't sit under this grace. Not at this strategic point of my life. And then he will get up and now begin to travel and go and meet me in the U.S. This guy's destiny has been wrongly attached to me. Are you seeing that now? To the point that this man can never know God by himself. Because the definition of Christianity and breakthrough as proposed by me is that if you do not receive a prophetic word from me, you are grounded, you are dead, you are finished. My name is Joshua Selman and I'm telling you it's a lie. If you take the word of God and believe it and walk within the principles that are kept in the word, I repeat to you that no divination and no enchantment. If you are reading the word properly, there are places in the word that will lead you to go and look for men to pray for you. So you don't have to be afraid of being in error. Are we together? I continue to watch with frustration, sincerely speaking. 
as prophecies continue to be aborted in the lives of people and they blame men of God and continue to make negative prophecies to come to pass in their lives. I told you respectfully so that in my entire paternal lineage, sincerely, I think aside from my dad, by the grace of God, I'm the most successful person. Entire, draw the line from anywhere till this. Can you imagine that kind of thing? I saw the spirit of failure and poverty and hardship in my family. You can be the greatest of anything, but live long enough, you must be the least. When I saw it, number one, I didn't deny it. I knew that the, if you deny it, that's another delay you are causing for yourself. The quicker you admitted it, the, the better for you. Just sit down and look at it and say, ah, okay, this is it. I see that there is a problem here. But I made up my mind. I, I love the word of God. I found it too. I found it. See, I have set thee above thrones, dominions, above all of these things, every name that is named. I started seeing something here. Jesus, the prophet, started speaking to my destiny. And I had the foolishness to believe him. The childlikeness to believe him. I believed him so much so that I disbelieved every other thing I saw. And then the Holy Spirit guided me enough to know what are the conditions. What does it take to actualize this? And then he began to show me step by step. And I said, it may be painful, oh God. I may not be able to go through this myself, but supply the grace. And he says, my strength is perfected in your weakness. Look what he has done today. Apostle is lucky. They pray. I remember when they were prophesying that day. Was it not two of us? They prophesied over everybody in a meeting. That's what many people say. That's what many parents say. They look at many great men of God and say, Ah, this guy, I, he was just lucky. I knew the meeting he got born again. The same altar call was made for everybody. One person responded, another person wished. Please make up your mind. Extraordinary fruitfulness will remain a dream. Did you hear what I said? There are people who are engaging with understanding and the results are showing. Extraordinary fruitfulness is not just it. Will, December will come and for many people they will find out that nothing like extraordinary fruitfulness happened. But if someone makes up his mind like Timothy that I'm going to war a good warfare. Prophecy has been sent ahead of me. Lord, what do I need to do? Show me. Your greatest prayer in this season can be, is not just show me your ways. Lord, show me the part I have to play. Show me. What do I have to do, oh God, to change my financial story? I've desired fresh oil. I have fasted and I have prayed. What is the key? To the anointing what is the key to a mighty supply of the spirit upon a man i found out the key to keep the holy spirit close to a man because i knew that the nature of the ministry that god had committed to me would require a depth of intimacy and i didn't want theory lord show me what keeps the Holy Spirit close to a man? Think of the risk that happens when he becomes far from you. And don't let nobody lie to you that he cannot be far from you. No. Huh. Spirit of the living God. I found him as the secret that he is an ever-present help in time of need. But what do I need to do as the recipient? Thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. Let me tell you this. I trust God's way. One of the secrets of my life is that I trust the way of God. 
most of us have allowed education intellect to corrupt the potency of the ways of god i believe god i believe god i remember when the lord gave instructions here for miracle service foolishly and childishly and did it everything he says to do you do when god declares anything here we go after him foolishly i remember jimmy's here he will tell you when the lord said to put some of the koinonia messages online audio audio message that is not very clear people online those of you who are social media experts know that people cannot spend two hours listening to something they don't have that time you break it into sections and someone sits down for two hours 30 minutes listening to volumes and volumes of a message my brothers and my sisters it is not let me tell you 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 will be shocked at the power of god that is released and the energy that prophecy carries when you align with it show me a man who has received a word from a prophet of god or has received a word from scripture and obtained grace from god to understand the requirements and do it i show you a man who you're speaking against you're cursing against you're wishing against is a waste of time my confidence today in life and in ministry is on my determination to keep doing the things that allow to host the presence of God. My confidence today is to keep doing the things that continue to bring increase in my life and in the ministry. That way you can stand and beat your chest under God and know you have entered your Sabbath. Satan can come challenges can come but you are as assured of victory as you are assured of christ sitting on his throne my life has no fear i sincerely mean it because i have found out i found how to commit god you commit god in the affairs of your life by obtaining grace to know what to do jesus himself knew what to do buy the ingredients for jollof rice and bring somebody who does not know how to mix them you have potential for rice that's prophecy but that rice will never never be prepared there at best you are going to have nonsense prepared at rice but then bring somebody who has taken out time to learn how to prepare rice and then bring the ingredients and within a short time as short as an hour you will see a delicious pot or plate of rice. God is not withholding financial blessings from you. The word has come. If nobody ever spoke it to you, scripture has already told you. God is not withholding increase and influence from you. Something about your not understanding his ways may be responsible. The irresponsibility of allowing prophecy work itself, thinking it is spiritual, is very dangerous from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain but when jesus walked upon the earth they tried to distract him and he said no 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 no. my meat is to do the will of him that has sent me jesus had an option to abort salvation when he was at gethsemane he cried and prayed can you take this cup off me but he said nevertheless my will not my will but yours be done and when he took that cross it was not an angel carrying it he was carrying it feeling the weight the moment he wanted to throw it he remembered he remembered man will not be grafted through me to be seated I, 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 if i throw this now i cannot call many sons to glory let me tell you this and i confess to you there were times in my life when I would be walking through the night and sometimes I would just stop and a joy of the spirit will come over me because I saw the days coming. I knew that they were days of joy and rest and no pain at that point sustained an ability to interrupt my focus. I knew. 
I was trying to know the Holy Spirit. Knowing the Holy Spirit is hard. Sometimes you want to sleep and he will just tell you to stroll. You will think you are going to pray for one hour. And you will just return to six in the morning. It's the price. While I am doing that, someone is seen in a vision that a young man is going to arise from the north. And he will carry the word and the life and the power of Jesus. That prophecy can remain in the realm of the spirit. When you do not partner with prophecy. Is God speaking? What have you not done that is making prophecy to not manifest in your life? What have you done to allow a negative prophecy come to pass in your life? Something was said. You saw it in a dream that the devil wants to oppress you. You saw it in a dream that an attack was coming to you and your children. You just got up and, and wrote it down. Usually that's what we do. I had a dream, 3.22 a.m. In that dream, I saw knife. I saw all of that. And you didn't do anything about it. Until six months after that time. Watch this. It will not come as a physical robber. Your prayer life goes down. Your finances goes down. All helpers leave you. What was working stops working. That was the dream prophecy seeking expression in your life like hezekiah there's something you would have done about it hey everybody in this house turn every plate upside down i have seen something that is an evil and we can stay the power away and then you get up and pray there are many things i see that the devil wants to bring upon people upon the ministry upon my life there are people who send me text messages sometimes. Apostle, this is what I've seen. Pray about the ministry. I don't sit down and cross my legs. While you are sleeping and snoring, I'm awake with God crying and praying. Lord, worship team. Lord, prayer department. Lord, this, there must be increase. People are coming. You are opening up doors. Prophecy. And you say, I saw it too. I saw that by this time, Koinonia would have increased. Yes, you saw it. But it was engaged. Is someone getting the teaching this night? Because we are going to pray. You will never see the outstretched arm of God with the assumption that prophecy will work itself out. No. You have a dream and you see people dying in your family. That means there is a word that is bringing death. What do you do about it? You don't wait till somebody dies. Say, ah! And you know, I, I, the other day I told you, you are a witness. What kind of witness is that? You can get up and fast. Fasting is powerful, oh. Yes, listen to me. Our, our Ajebo generation, fasting is important for a man's destiny. You will never be able to do business with God if you cannot turn your plates upside down. There are times you need to sit like Elijah. You write the list of all the nonsense you saw that must change. One by one you are praying. What is this I saw about my wife? What is this I saw about my husband? What is this I saw about my business? I saw an attack. I, I'm sleeping and all of a sudden I have a dream. And in that dream I see chains everywhere. In that dream I see people crying. You don't need an interpretation. The character of scripture shows you that mourning is not associated with glory. So already let the Bible interpret that for you that is trouble. You can call somebody. I pray that you have a good friend. That when you need to change prophecy he will be available with you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you have a good friend that you say, please, can you stay awake for three hours with me today? I'm sensing the spirit of death over my family. I don't know, but I've been sensing it. And the person says, ah, you know, coincidentally, I had a dream of death. It shouldn't put fear. Your consolation is that the most sure word of prophecy has an ability to superimpose everything planned. And you can get up in the night and agree. And both of you are praying. How do you pray? You engage the truth of scripture. You don't pray and say, God, why now? Where are you? Is it that are you still there? That, that's not prayer. That's just lamentation. 
you begin to pray when you engage the truth of god's word i choose life i'm the head of this home my children may be too small to choose life but i stand as a covering i choose life when they are in school i choose life are you getting what i'm saying now i've taught you this thing listen if you are married in this place, young or old, you are a man. If you don't go around praying and laying hands on your children, you are not a very good ambassador of this ministry. The children should be sleeping. Don't go, you are not a father because they serve you plate and you are sitting now. You get up and carry that regalia of priesthood. You are changing negative prophecies. Your child comes back with a result from second position to 12. The other one from 4th to 18. You don't just flog them. No. Psalm 112. Blessed is the man that feared the Lord. This is prophecy now. That delighted greatly in his commands. His seed shall be mighty. This is not might. Lord, you have said my seed shall be mighty. Shekakoska. Manda prakatoselekata. While you are speaking that word, there are powers, let me tell you, that reside in the heavenlies. You speak and command your morning. He told Job, Has thou commanded thy morning? You, are, you, are, you sleep and wake up with a dream. Someone injects you with HIV and tells you this is HIV. You get up and say, and you know, I'm feeling the spot. You get up and see marks on your body. Physical marks from a dream. And you sit down and just laugh. Laugh? No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake. As mad as he is, he comes near fire, he will move. I'm not that mad. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. We want to see you like a mighty rushing wind. We want to dwell under the shadow of your wings. Over every challenge in my life, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. Blow, blow, say, blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wind. Everything you see in your dream is prophecy. Seeking manifestation, good or bad. Everything you see in your dream, in your vision is a prophecy. Seeking manifestation. You can allow it, you can change it, you can stop it. Inaction is a disaster to a believer. It's what you don't want that you will see happen. Can you open your mouth in one minute and just blast in the spirit? Sebaranta paroko to sopre ke te ke lekata. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. Please look at me. One of the demands of priesthood. Get my message on priesthood. Is that men become men of prayer not just prayer in terms of petition but legislators of spiritual reality anything you sit and watch will happen did you hear what i said listen there was no record of job praying for himself there was no record of any man praying for job 
the devil came through him and through his covering to afflict his family he prayed for his children it's true that he feared God it's true that he ensured evil but that's not the seed for deliverance you must know how to pray and engage listen let me tell you let the devil get used to you not keeping quiet when negative things come don't say I'm not a member of prayer band I'm not a member of this and that the times that we live in let me tell you it requires men with the spirit of Issachar it's a man who had an understanding of the times otherwise you can confess I shall not die and that will sweep you like a chicken you must have the eyes that see lift your voice and begin to pray I change everything that is not consistent with the counsel of God concerning my life my family my finances please pray pray I change everything in the name of Jesus Christ every prophecy that is not of God seeking manifestation through my life I reject you by the power of the Holy Ghost I reject you I speak the word the most sure word of prophecy I shall not die but leave the head not the tail above only not beneath hallelujah hallelujah now listen i'd like you to find someone to agree with you everything god said or you have seen in the spirit that is consistent with god's will and has been hanging by any power of divination within the second heavens lift your voice and cry i command that it must come to pass i wore a good warfare in the realm of the spirit i decree and i declare the joy the peace the prosperity the blessings the anointing upon my ministry upon my life I declare the powers of the heavens holding everything that belongs to me. I command the release by the power of the word of God. Pray. Few minutes and we're done. You are enforcing prophecy. Hallelujah. Matthew 18, 18, please. 
Oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, oh yeah yeah, Yahweh. shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shall lose binding and losing those of allowing and disallowing are we together now please listen to me please listen listen that everything that belongs to me and has been held by any power it must be released now not tomorrow now lift your voice and begin to pray Koinonia, pray. Pray prophecy to manifestation. Pray prophecy to manifestation. I command the relief in the name of Jesus Christ. Hey, Baroko Shata Lekata, Rakata Barakato Seketesh. Hallelujah. 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 Last prayer, and we are done tonight. Psalm ninety one. Psalm ninety one. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God, Him I will trust. Continue, please. Surely He shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. 4. He shall cover me with His feathers and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. 5. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night nor for the arrow that wasted or flyeth by day listen very carefully look at what the bible is writing here next verse six nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday seven a thousand shall fall by thy side and ten thousand by thy right side it shall not come nigh thee eight only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Listen. That means every time you hear of negative things, someone is dying, they are kidnapping someone, this is happening. In as much as you sympathize with people, you don't do them at the detriment of your own conviction. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? If Joshua Selman dies today, it does not mean that the truth of scripture giving life is a lie so in as much as you sympathize with people do it lovingly but not at the detriment of the immutability of God's counsel let God be true and let every man 
be a liar. Until you rise up to possess your possession, you will never, never possess your possession. Jesus was in the wilderness praying and fasting for 40 days. Satan came to tempt him. When he defeated him, he returned in the power of the spirit and his fame went abroad. Let me tell you something, my brothers and sisters. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but there are controlling powers that continue to see that negative prophecies continue to be enforced in our lives. And until the saints understand how to legislate by the spirit, we will continue to be victims of the speakings of men. Last prayer. Father, every prophetic word that came through your word or through your servant upon my life this year, I stand in partnership. I call it Maranatha. Let that prophecy manifest in my life. Lift your voice and pray. The conditions to make it happen. I obtain grace to understand. I obtain grace to walk in keeping with it. Pray. Every prophetic word about my spiritual life, about my finances, about my marriage, about fruitfulness, I receive by the Spirit. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding. I obtain grace. I obtain understanding to know what to do. To know how to partner with prophecy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one testimony and we'll round up tonight. A gentleman sent me a text and he said he was tired of what was happening to him and his family. You know what people call failure at the edge of breakthrough? That you see good things, but just when your hand is about to obtain it, trouble must ferment itself from wherever and come and destroy you. He said he was tired and one night... He took out time that if he's to die here, he would die and he would pray. Listen to me, true story. He was praying. He said he had come here with an oil that I prayed for. And then, you know, he went back and applied that oil. And he was praying and praying and praying. And then it looked like he fell into a trance. And according to him, he said, I walked to him. And I told him to lift two of his hands. And when he lifted his hands, I started removing what looked like maggots out from his hands like that removed or uh, maybe a number of them when the gentleman said that happened by the next day he got a job next day he got a job see i've told you time does not change anything you must engage with prophecy you must engage with prophecy don't wait until miracle service when you write your prayer request and bring it here. Go and write it now. And trust God for grace. One hour in the night will not stop your sleep. We spend three hours worrying. Wake up in the night. Every man in Koinonia is an intercessor. Let me tell you, if you're a married man in this place and you're not an intercessor, you are not a good ambassador. Learn it. Wake up and pray. Put that request on the ground. Place your hand on it. Pray. It will look like nothing is happening. Don't mind what you are seeing. You just pray. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled. Let me tell you what will happen when you pray. Satan will use the sense realm to send images that negate what you are trying to do because he knows that to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace you can even finish that prayer 
and go back to bed and have a dream that is another negative connotation and you stand up and say but i just wasted my time so these three days prayer and fasting is nothing if it was not bringing an effect with hell the devil will not send you that kind of dream the key is to remain let me tell you this there are certain prayers that you don't pray for one day let me be sincere with you and i don't mean to insult anybody but that understanding that when you pray once is done well i may not have enough experience to challenge that but i can tell you the one i know that when you stay on an issue huh, and you pray and cry jesus prayed he came out saw the disciples went back and prayed the same words the same way three times jesus prayed bible said looking up to jesus not up to any prophet or any man of god don't pray once and sit down how long do i pray until you see the feast manifest in the earth realm you pray on when you see the the cloud manifest in the earth realm it gives you a sign then you know that those realities have reached otherwise please pray if it takes 21 days pray the grace for the the spirit of gluttony that will not allow you to fast and pray i curse it now in the name of jesus it's a different thing if you have a health issue that may not allow you to pray there are many of us the last time you fasted was during um fasting and prayer that's not healthy for your spiritual life please don't say it does not matter everybody know we know where we are coming from by god's grace our children will not go through this but in between where you are coming from and where you are going you must stand as a bridge and flog this thing out once and for all reject spiritual laziness stay with the word please listen to me let me advise you i say this not to everybody at least i have a responsibility over you please obtain grace from god to sit down in one place this spirit of running up and down from here visiting this running and down i cancel that spirit in this season in jesus name you must obtain grace don't sit in your room gisting gossiping talking open your bible and sit down for god's sake and study more than listening to a message carry your bible carry your notebook and sit down read something spirit of the living god open my eyes and sit down and read there were times when any house you go to you see people even if they are just in their bible is in front of them but right now is this these are phones everywhere you sit down you are watching film you are watching this i'm not saying it's wrong but life has seasons for god's sake a farmer who is sleeping during rainy season will be foolish to go to the farm during harvest the earth still works on seed time and harvest you are a man of god here reduce your physical exposure and stay in the secret place and pray I'll move around I'm a pastor this I'm a prophet this I'm a apostle this sit down in one place with the word be sound in scripture be mighty in power most of what you need for your destiny is internal sit down don't become a busybody roaming here and there you know in the afternoon you are there in the hot sun you are moving around you visit this one i'm not saying visitation is wrong but you are at a critical point of your destiny receive grace to sit down study when you fall asleep and you stand up and you didn't read your bible you didn't pray don't act like nothing happened just forgive yourself for nothing no you stand up any time is right for prayer if you plan to pray in the morning and evening that's my recommendation for you i've told you the morning times and the evening times are powerful times so said the ministry of jesus there are few times jesus prayed in the afternoon i'm not saying prayer in the afternoon is wrong but the activities of life will not give you the kind of focus wake up in the morning and pray wake up in the night and pray some of you as you go back now don't say it's too late and it's too cold receive grace from god stretch a little and pray and don't just pray anyhow pray strategically pray scriptures obtain grace from god there's no light you switch on your candle 
you switch on your phone instead of just watching a movie and then you 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 watch you watch spirits to enter your destiny there is a price for this thing let me tell you god is not a magician there is a real price either you want it or you don't but if you want it you mean business and be aware of distractors are we together there are people who are sincere people but somehow it looks like because of their weakness they allow the devil just when you want to pray they just come and knock your house have the courage to tell people please i would appreciate it if you want to come and see me i truly would appreciate that you just let me know i may be studying or you can come anytime but please don't be offended if you come and find me studying somebody should not buy a dvd and come to your house to watch and say his own spoiled is that a blessing what if he comes to meet you doing something please take your life seriously this is about destiny make up your mind that this prophetic word must come to pass especially this issue of finances go and get there are too many messages that have been preached around the area of finances get it and sit with it don't just say lay hands on me thank god for seed thank god for the prophetic but sit down i'm a young man what does it take to be established lord will i end up in this one room forever the answer is yes until you change it you sit down what do i need to know are we together father we thank you we bless you for tonight You have shown to us that without engaging prophecy it will fail and you have shown to us that negative prophecies can be changed lord bring us together as a family of faith and as a body of believers to a point where we exalt the truths of your word we exalt the immutability of your counsel more than any opinion we choose the word of god as a sure word a more sure word of prophecy we choose the word of god as final authority in all matters over our lives we stake our lives at your word in the name of jesus father i pray for your precious people every condition that needs to be engaged to actualize every prophetic word that is upon their lives I pray that both the grace and the understanding be revealed to them in the name of Jesus that you will act out in faith and that in the name of Jesus the Lord will honor you and the Lord will cause your life to be an unending testimony of wonders do this oh God and be glorified for in Jesus name we pray amen and amen let me make an altar call last week because of time I couldn't make an altar call a gentleman sent me a text and said apostle I was waiting for an altar call I really wanted to give my life to Jesus it broke me so bad I asked the Lord for forgiveness and so no matter what it is we'll have to make an altar call please keep standing we're already rounding up please keep standing let's honor those who will be coming there are people inside there are people outside who are saying apostle I desire to hand my life over completely to Jesus or I desire to rededicate my life if there's anyone like that you're inside you're outside you're saying I need Jesus time is gone but I need Jesus please make your way to the front very quickly don't be ashamed don't wait for anybody to come whether you are outside make your way inside God bless you God bless you someone is coming God bless you those outside overflow one overflow two please clear the way for them very quickly there's nothing to be ashamed of you are standing before Jesus. This is the beginning of a great life, the beginning of a great destiny. Those coming from outside, please clear the way for them. Protocol, if there's anyone coming, if you're coming, please double up. Make it quick, make it quick. Our time is gone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you very, very much. God bless you. This is a place where no one at all for any reason and under any condition would condemn you. We're here, we're a family, we love you, we salute your courage for making Jesus Lord of your life. This is why, uh, one of the reasons why he created this platform. 
It's my joy and my honor to lead you to Jesus, young, old. I want you to lift your right hand and say this passionately and truthfully after me. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, if you're joining them, please come very quickly so that you participate in the prayer. Come quickly. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I have heard your word and I declare by faith that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King over my life and my destiny. I ask for mercy. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for the newness of life. From tonight, I declare that I'm a child of God. I am saved. The Spirit of the Lord lives within me. The grace to live a victorious life is mine right now. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Jesus, thank you for these ones. Precious people you have brought by your spirit and by your grace. They are making commitments and some of them are rededicating their lives to you. You are the only one who can keep us. You are the only one who can build us. I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of Satan, the power of sin is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus, the grace to walk in victory is released upon you right now. I declare that from tonight you go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Thank you for this decision. Um, there's someone waving his hands. All of you, please look at me in concert. I just want you to follow this gentleman. He will lead you to a group of people who will just talk to you on our behalf very briefly. Let's appreciate them as they go. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Alaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kato, kete branda kata bako tosko tobre kete kene kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.